Hey everybody, it's Shannon. Today's video is gonna be about insha'Allah and mashallah, everything you've ever wanted to know about both of those Arabic phrases, okay? So even if you've never formally studied Arabic, you're gonna get a good education today. Uh, all right, so insha'Allah, let's just dive right into it. Oh, and I have a Band-Aid right here. I don't know if it's very noticeable. I got stitches a couple days ago. And I think this the string that they use, sorry, I'm not good with medical terms. The thread they use to stitch, it's like blue or something and it just looks ugly. So I'm covering it up with a Band-Aid. Inshallah, right, let's talk about it. Inshallah is three words, it's an Arabic phrase. And some people say, oh, inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. It's actually inshallah, inshallah. It's, there's a Hamza in there, all right? So let's break it down. In, with the, it's got the Alif with the Hamza underneath. In, with the Nun. That's a conjunction. Please, I hope that's right. Prepos no, it's not a preposition. I think it's a, it's a conjunction. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? So in, I'm gonna put it up here on the thing. In is a, yeah, it is a conjunction. It means that. In means that. That shot is a verb meaning will, to will, to will something. Insha'Allah. And then Allah obviously is God with a capital G. This is another, like a whole other discussion, but if you're monotheistic, Allah means God with a capital G. I'm just gonna like leave it at that, all right? Insha'Allah. God willing, or literally that willed God, inshallah. And we often use it talking about something that's gonna happen in the future, right? So I'm gonna get this to, you know, this will be happening tomorrow, inshallah. And I asked my friend the other day, I was like, you know, the verb sha means willed and it's it's in the past tense. Why don't we say like in yesha'Allah? So that's like the present tense, right? In Muldaria, present tense. In yesha'Allah means that, you know, that God wills. Or why don't we say in so far, yesha'Allah, in, you know, that which God will will to happen, right? Because I, you know, I, don't, I don't know how it works with like the time, space, time continuum, right? So if you're talking about something in the future, shouldn't you say like in uh, so far, yesha'Allah or something like that? And I asked my Saudi friend this and her answer, she said, uh, because we consider everything to be like destined and to be written. I actually like, I'm just getting it a little bit now too. I got goosebumps when I read that, but I was like, I'm getting it on my legs too. It's like the mic drop. I was like, oh, it's like, because we consider everything like it's, it's written like in destiny. Because Qadr is like your, is like fate. So, Qadr. Yeah, predestined is, the, is what the, the best translation. It's everything's predestined and written. I was just, I'm still now, I see I have goosebumps from it. Just me Mugashar. And then my other friend said that some people do say, Yasha'Allah, Ahyanan. Let's talk about the use of Insha'Allah. When I was living in Dubai, before I even started learning Arabic, I remember at work, because I worked in a Saudi company, sometimes like there would be an assignment, we, we would say, oh, we need this from your team tomorrow. And they say, uh, of course, inshallah, I will have it to you tomorrow. And then my manager would be like, no, 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 don't say inshallah, say for sure, you need it tomorrow. Inshallah, inshallah. And it, you would see that, yeah, some people would say, oh, inshallah, I'll do this. But it's like, as if it means hopefully, or, you know, oh, we'll see what happens. You know, hopefully I'll get it to you tomorrow, inshallah. Like it wasn't a really serious response. And I feel like that's kind of, it depends on the person, but I feel like in, in practice, it's like when people say inshallah, you're like, oh no, he's saying inshallah. There, there was a funny tweet I saw recently when, it, when there was the election with Biden and Trump and it was taking forever for the recount or for the results to come out. And somebody tweeted, Biden said inshallah, that's why it's taking forever. <laughs> um, I'll try to find it and put it here. But yeah, so a lot of people have come to equate, you know, especially non-native Arabic speakers, they've come to equate inshallah with like, oh, okay, it means they're not even gonna take it serious, it's gonna take them forever. Whereas my friends who are more devout Muslims or people who are more, I guess, conservative about the religion, they've gotten kind of like annoyed by the way that the usage of the phrase has 
come to be uh, come to be used, I guess you could say. So there was actually an, a writer for Arab News. He said he wrote an article in English, Ibrahim Al Amr. He said, "We are taught by Islam not to make definitive statements about the future, sh since only God knows what will happen." This means that if someone asked me to provide him with something, instead of, I will give it to you today, I should say, I will give it to you today, inshallah. Another reason it's very commonly used in Arabic circles is that it's a phrase of respect. As kids, when our parents tell us, do your homework or clean up your room, it's more respectful to say, inshallah, instead of plainly okay. I didn't actually know that before I read the article, so it's like also a thing of respect to say, inshallah. So those are two reasons this phrase is widespread here, religious and cultural. Seems harmless enough, except that some of the reactions that some non-Arabs have expressed make it seem as if the phrase means keep dreaming. Maybe not, I wouldn't go that extreme. I would say oftentimes though, it's like it's not, they say inshallah, and it shows like you're not committed really. Apparently this word has become associated with what is called secondhand procrastination, i.e. never getting things done for other people. Say a guy visits the Jawazat or customs or a company to fix a problem with his documents. He hands the required papers to the official and waits. When he checks the status of the application one week later, the response is, not finished yet, inshallah tomorrow it will be. He checks tomorrow and gets to know it's not done yet, but inshallah next week. He visits next week, hoping his papers are okay now, only for the official to indifferently mutter with his eyes on the monitor, not finished yet, inshallah, next week. Aha, so that is how this word got this reputation. Thank you, Ibrahim, that's actually a perfect example. So, like I said, like when I needed like maintenance done or things like that, and I would talk to people, okay, inshallah, this, inshallah will come out tomorrow, and then they didn't actually come. And so, so kind of as a joke, we're like, no, no, don't say inshallah, say for sure, say I will do it. My Arabic teacher, when I would tell him about this, he'd be like, oh yeah, you know, they've, you know, he didn't say this, the word bastardized, but he was like, you know, you know they've bastardized the word, you know, the phrase, or they've, they've messed up the kind of sacredness of the sanctity, I guess you could say, the sanctity of inshallah, because people use it in a way that's very non-committal, whereas, you know, you're using God's name in there, inshallah, so it should be like a very serious thing. So for me, I, I personally, I don't really, I don't say inshallah almost ever. I think I would, would kind of as, as part of my habit when I was in the Middle East, even when I was speaking with non-Arabic speakers, sure, inshallah, you know. Uh, but I learned very quickly, yeah, don't say it for something unless you're actually really, you're gonna do it no matter what. And the only way that you wouldn't do it is if some act of God got in the way. Okay, so inshallah, I'll do it. And since we're talking about sha and to the verb, to will, we're also going to talk about mashallah, all right? So that's another phrase in Arabic. If you've done beginner's Arabic, you probably know that ma, mim alif, it means what. It's a formal way of saying what, like, like ma is smuk, ma is smuki, like aish is smik, shu is smik, you know? So ma is the more formal way of saying it. Ma means what, and then sha, as you know, means willed. The past tense, mashallah, God, what God willed. All right, and so this one, in the sense that we use it in the past tense, mashallah, this one makes a lot of sense. Why are we using the past tense? Because we say mashallah to express like admiration or something is so amazing. Like, I remember when I told my colleagues in Dubai that I have 14 siblings, they're like, mashallah, mashallah, you know, um, or, you know, you see something that's, uh, somebody's, you know, got a new house. Oh, mashallah, your house is so beautiful. You know, we're saying that's what God willed. And it's like another way of, yeah, showing admiration or uh, hey, appreciation for something, something impressive, something great. You're kind of attributing that to God, like mashallah, mashallah, like something like that. Another thing that you might hear from your Arab friends is when you say like, oh, your, your baby's so cute, or oh, your house is so cool. They would say, guli mashallah which means, because I'm a girl, guli to a girl, or if you're a guy, they'll say, gul mashallah, say mashallah. And <laughs> the reason for that is like, I feel like there's kind of like a superstitious element that if you don't say mashallah, then you're, you're being jealous and that, and jealousy is very powerful. It can cause things to break or whatever. Like I've heard, I mean, I know this sounds a superstitious and I'm getting goosebumps again, but, um, 
my Hijazi Arabic teacher said, like, if somebody has a bracelet or something, you should say mashallah. Don't just say, oh, I love your bracelet. Say mashallah as well. Because if you don't say mashallah, maybe the bracelet will break or something will happen or they'll lose it and then it's going to be your fault. Like, because they might think that your jealousy or the evil eye or something that caused it. I know in, in English we say the green eyes of jealousy. My eyes are green, so I try to steer away from using that. But yeah, they say like the jealous, the evil eye or the jealous eye. And so that's why you, you should say mashallah. And so like when somebody showed me a picture of their little sister, I said, oh my gosh, she's so cute. And they're like, guli mashallah. You know, same, and I was like, oh yeah, mashallah, you know, and I remember to do it as a reflex now, just because you want to show that you're not jealous of it and you don't want anything, any harm to come to it. You're just saying like, I'm happy for what, you know, for what God has given you. God, Allah, your higher power, whatever. So mashallah. So hopefully this video gave you some insight as to both inshallah and mashallah, and also the verb shah. Like I said, for inshallah, it sounds a little counterintuitive because you're talking about the future, but why are you using a verb in the past tense? Because that's just the way that they do it. And another thing too, you don't often hear sha' being used with things that are not religious. So if you're saying he wants something, we say huwa yurid or huwa yabgha shay. You wouldn't say huwa yasha' like sadiqi huwa yasha' in uh, so we, you know, it's like, it's, it's something that I think they reserve it for more religious things. Just like in English, I mean, you would say like God willed. I wouldn't say, oh yeah, I willed, I willed that house to be built for me. You know, yeah, it's, it's, so it's used in more religious context. So like I said, yeah, inshallah, mashallah, and they're both used in the, it's the past tense conjugation of the verb. Okay, so we kind of nerded out a little bit as we are nerding out. Actually, I'm applying for a data science master's at this time, so wish me luck if you watch this video. And if I get in, say mashallah. <laughs> no, say mabruk. And I'll say shukran. All right, uh, so I think we covered everything. So inshallah, mashallah, the verb shat, and the usage of inshallah. So hopefully this video helped you. If you're interested in uh, Arabic lessons or you have questions, comments down below, we do uh, tattoo translations, we do translation, proofreading, all that kind of thing. Contact us ASAP. Please, please like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Shukran jazeera lakum, inshallah, and shukran gareeb. See you guys next time.